Today I'll be talking about how capacitors work and I'll be using this setup to talk about it. I'll also be using a few pictures because I can't fucking describe shit that well. And pretty much capacitors are things that charge up, hold charge, and then discharge. And they get discharged up to 400 volts if, if you really want them to and it fucking hurts when it, when it happens across your finger. But I hope you learn something from this video and I hope we sort of learn what capacitors do and are and I'm not going to be getting into the maths they also filter out AC for they they let AC pass and then filter out DC but I'm not going to be getting into that because I can't be fucked I just wanted to quickly say thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it subscribe I notice every time that counter goes up even if it's by one subscriber and it gives me a little dopamine kick when when I see it go up so if you want to make me happy for a little bit press the red button, I really do appreciate it, and notice it. So the actual premise, the actual principle of capacitors is really simple. They're literally two plates of metal slightly close together with something that doesn't conduct electricity in the middle, in between them. No matter what you achieve in life, two plates of metal will still be more useful than that. So these are what capacitors usually look like in an electronic circuit. You probably, if you've ever seen a circuit like this, you've probably seen one of these and been like, what the fuck is that? They're, they're capacitors and they can be mistaken for resistors and diodes, I guess, but they're capacitors. There are four main kinds of capacitors, ceramic capacitors, carbon film capacitors, tantalum capacitors, and electrolytic capacitors. Today, I'm pretty sure I'll be focusing on electrolytic capacitors. I mean, it might not be, it might just be any general capacitor, but electrolytic's my favorite. It's, it's the big boy of the bunch. Now, when I say sheets of metal, they're actually kind of foils of metal curled up in, in sort of a cylindrical form. You can see the container of the capacitor, it tells you what, which one's positive and negative terminal. And so there's an anode foil, which is positive charge, cathode foil, which is negative charge, and then there's a separator, these are called dielectrics, and there are a few common dielectrics used, and get ready for these fucking chemistry terms that I can almost not pronounce. Okay, so some of the dielectrics include aluminium oxide, tantalum pentoxide, and get ready for this fucking eight inch dildo of a word, polytetrafluoroethylene. Now you may be wondering what this all is, and it's very simple. These two plates of, of metal, represent the capacitor obviously this over here is the battery or the electromotive force what it what moves the electrons what actually pushes the electricity and red positive blue negative and then the lamps with the redstone line is literally just wires or electricity whatever you want to think conducts this the shit that's going going around let me explain how the capacitor works in a practical term. We have two metal plates. They have electrons that can be moved in them. They're equally charged. This one has the same amount of electrons as this one. If this one has less electrons, this one will become positively charged. And if this one has more than this one, this is negatively charged. So if we turn this on, let's just turn that on, create a, a path over here. And then these electrons want to get to here because this is the positive side of the battery positive will attract the negatively charged electrons because electrons are negatively charged so if we allow them to go let's turn that on they'll move all the way around and they're moving down this path because the positive charge is attracting them which pushes in turn pushes more electrons out this side and once they're out this side, the negative terminal of the battery is repelling them, pushing them even further. And then they realize, they, they feel a tug because now this plate over here, they've traveled all along here. This plate over here doesn't have many electrons in it. So it's positively charged and they want to get to that positive charge. So they're building up, hitting a wall because they can't get between these two plates. So electrons are now building up in this this plate so this has heaps of electrons this is almost none well not many I guess and it's creating potential difference and it's called potential difference because we have the potential to create a, a good path for the electrons to travel over and as soon as we do that 
they'll all rush over instantaneously, like speed of light speed. It's f fucking super fast, and that movement of electrons will create electricity because that's what electricity is, movement on ele of electrons. So now we have positive and negative. If you put a multimeter on, it'll show you how many volts there is. Um, and we've got this path. This path is blocked. There's no no easy path for the electrons to move around. So they're, they're just sitting here building up, wanting to get over there until we create this path for them. And as soon as we turn on this switch, there'll be an easy path for them to go bang all the way around. And then, wait, let me see if what happens if I turn that off. Oh yeah, that happens. All right, let's ignore that. So let's flick the switch and that happens. And now all the electrons move over like that, creating electricity and energy. And that's how a capacitor works. That's the capacitor discharging all its energy, providing some temporary power source. Interesting to note, capacitors are one of the most common things in electrical circuits to go totally up the fuck so they're big problems in terms of fault finding they can often be the issue in circuits they blow up and then they smell like absolute shit holy fuck i i can't tell you they just smell so bad